as our custom is now, um, our scripture reading is going to be come, coming from someone in the pews. Annette Clement will have our scripture reading. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. All right. At this point, we'll turn the service over to Pastor Evan. Sabbath, everyone. Um, this is uh, my special mask today. Gene and I are, are matching. Uh, my, my other one, the, uh, the string broke. But uh, anyway, this is uh, it's unique. So I hope you're all having a good Sabbath. And um, uh, well, it's, it's Fourth of July weekend. And uh, it's, it's a good time to remember how God has blessed this country and uh, how he has blessed us with being able to live here. So uh, I hope you will all uh, remember that this weekend. Let's pray as we go into God's word now. Uh, dear Father in heaven, um, we'd like to ask for your special blessing upon this service um, upon uh, the words that I'm going to share from your word, and that you may be glorified and lifted up above all, and may we be inspired to serve you with all of our heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, this message is called The Avenue to Glory. This week I had an interesting experience. Uh, Wednesday night, we have prayer meeting in Albemarle, and on the way to prayer meeting, I saw the temperature gauge on my car going up. It was very hot on Wednesday. It was probably in the 90s, high 80s, and I saw the temperature uh, going up, and it, the light came on, and it was red. So I got to prayer meeting, and I thought, okay, well, I'll let it cool down and uh, see, see what happens. We finished prayer meeting. Um, that evening, and I began to drive my car again, and the light came on again. So I was like, I can't chance driving back to Asheboro. It's about a 45-mile drive. I wasn't going to chance driving back. So I um, went to Harris Teeter and uh, parked over there. I thought it would be a good place to leave my car just in case it did overheat. So I drove over there, and... Um, well, that light was on, and I thought, okay, i got to figure out what to do. So I went in. Uh, my engine was a little lower on oil than it should have been, so I put some oil in, tested. I, I didn't think that would work, but I was like, well, we'll, we'll give it a shot. It needs oil anyway. Um, so I was out there with my hood up, and I'm thinking, okay, well, Maybe I'll, well, I have a few options. I could call a cab. I could um, sleep in my car. I could, uh, those are my two options, basically. And I was like, oh, I could do either one. Well, with my hood being up, there was a guy in the parking lot at Harris Teeter, and he saw me. And he said, hey, you doing all right over there? <laughs> I was like, well, I said, we'll see because I was about to start, start my car up again. And uh, it, did, it got hot again. And so he said, hey, you know what? Uh, what can I do to help you? And I was like, okay, well, this is good. He said, where do you live? I said, I live in Asheboro. And he says, well, if you need to go up there, I'll give you a ride. I was like, all right. Um, and I... I'm a pretty good judge of people I can trust to do things with. I, I don't know why God's giving me that sense with things. I mean, when I lived over in Asheville, I had 
I had some even homeless guys stay with me before, but I can usually tell someone if I can trust them or not um, to be around them. Um, so I felt safe around this guy. And so he gave me a ride back to Asheboro. Turns out he was a Christian, and the Lord impressed upon him uh, to give me a ride. Uh, we got back to my, my place at 9.30, 10 at night. So um, the point is, is that you know, when you're traveling somewhere, when you're looking to go somewhere, when you're going to be taking the avenue somewhere, sometimes you'll be uh, running into difficulties. You may overheat, you see the light come on, and you realize you need help. And the Lord will put people in your path to make that easier. And in this case, um, there was a man who the Lord put there that gave me a ride back. I didn't have to spend money on a cab. It was nice to talk with him about the Lord uh, on the way there. So it was, uh, it was a nice thing that God did for me. And so on the avenue to glory, God promises that you will have help. Let's go over to the book of Luke. The book of Luke and chapter 2. Or excuse me, John 14. John 14. Let's go to John 14 and verses uh, 25 and 26. John 14 25 and 26. Uh, Jesus was speaking to his disciples here, and he's explaining to them that he's about to leave them, and he wants to be th them to be encouraged on the avenue and the road that is ahead of them, that the, and he won't be there in person. So here's a word of encouragement from Jesus. In John 14, 25, he says, these things I have spoken to you while being present with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives to um, do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Um, you know, when, when I was in the parking lot, I, was, I wasn't I was too discouraged, actually. I was a little disappointed. I was like, oh, now it's going to be more of a pain to get home. But, you know, I, because I serve the Lord, I, I did have an actual peace. I wasn't flustered. I was pretty relaxed, actually. So I was just thinking, well, you know, something will work out. And the Lord provided help. And that's what Jesus is saying here is when we serve God and we're on the road to heaven, especially on the avenue to heaven, to glory in heaven, God promises us help and we can have peace on that road. Even when obstacles come and even when we overheat and difficulties come, he promises that there will be help. We have a peace as Christians that the world doesn't really have. Um, their peace is temporary, it's fleeting, and it's not fully dependable. But we have God who promises the Holy Spirit to be there to give us a ride when we need it. He's the uh, eternal, infinite helper. And on the avenue to glory... Um, we, we uh, will have difficulties, but we do have a helper. And I want to talk about uh, a little bit more about avenues here. Let's go to 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel and chapter 11. Now, there's not only... Uh, one avenue we can take, but uh, there are choices because God wants us to have free will. Um, there's an avenue to glory, and there's an avenue somewhere else. Let's go to Second Samuel, verse eleven. I mean, chapter eleven. Okay. Um, 
I'm going to do a decent amount of uh, reading right here. So please um, focus in, pay attention, and try to, try to imagine everything that we're going to be reading together, okay? We're in 2 Samuel 11, verse 1. It happened in the spring of the year at the time when kings go out to battle that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel, and they destroyed the people of Ammon and besieged Rabbah, but David remained at Jerusalem. Then it happened one evening that David arose from bed and walked on the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman bathing, and the woman was very beautiful to behold. So David sent and inquired about the woman. And someone said, Is this not Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? Then David sent messengers and took her. And she came to him, and he lay with her, for she was cleansed from her impurity. And she returned to her house, and then the woman conceived. So she sent and told David and said, I am with child. Okay, now you have to imagine David's situation here. Um, first thing to note in verse 1 is that it was time when the kings would normally go out to battle. And David did something different than usual. He actually remained at Jerusalem. So he uh, took some time to uh, relax while everyone else was going out and fighting. And during this time, the enemy came to him and presented him a temptation when he saw Bathsheba bathing. Then you can imagine David was um, probably upset at himself for what he'd done. And then even more discouraged and worried when this lady Bathsheba comes back and says, I am with child. So a few things to note here. One, David should have been out fighting at this point in time. Um, of course, there is a time to rest and a time to battle and be at work, but David was resting when he probably should have been out battling. So the enemy came to him in a time of idleness. And in that time of idleness, while David was not uh, busy, uh, the enemy presented this temptation before him. And so you can see David's beginning to go down an avenue that uh, is not the avenue to glory. It's the avenue to perdition. And uh, this is the same road that, uh, that Judas took, uh, the son of perdition. But uh, fortunately, David was, was redeemed from this road. So one good point here is that if you begin to go down the avenue of death, there's still hope. God will redeem you if you're open, and he makes you open. So... David was presented with this temptation, and he began to go down a bad avenue in a time of idleness. The enemy said, okay, I'm going to get David here. And it happened. So how did this happen? Um, well, some ways that we can begin to go down the avenue to destruction are this. Um, one is an indulging appetite. So... Um, catering too much to the flesh. And, and then uh, what Satan seeks to do is engross the mind with his uh, temptations. And in this case, with uh, Bathsheba, uh, that's what happened with David. Satan attracted David with Bathsheba, and he engrossed, he um, flattered, he paralyzed David's senses with outward attractions. So this is something that the enemy often does to us. While we are hoping 
to go to the glorious kingdom while we're on the avenue to glory, when that thermostat comes on, when we overheat, um, it's a point of temptation even. Because in my case for the car, I could have been tempted to uh, curse God or be upset and say, God, why, you know, why is this happening to me? In David's case, when the tem temptation came, his temptation was to indulge uh, his appetite. And that is one way that Satan seeks to entrap us and derail us and not allow us to reach our destination on the road to glory. And there are various temptations that Satan presents um, each one of us with, and they're different for different people. But it's important to know your weak points. It's important to know where the enemy is going to tempt you and guard yourself against those things. I was reading, um, you know, some about this idea of by beholding we become changed and, and how important it is to behold Jesus on the road to glory, on the avenue to glory. And, uh, and it's important what we view, what we see, what we think about. And I was reading uh, in some of um, Ellen White's writings, and she, she mentioned even, even in her day, she said, I want to hide the newspaper from my household because of the, the horrible things that are being published in the newspaper even. Um, sin is glorified. Every evil thing is uncovered and made known to people. And this is actually one way that Satan seeks to make us more familiar with sin. Uh, we don't have to hide in a cave and stay there and not reach people, but God wants us to guard the things that we see, that we listen to, that we read, even so much as to be careful about what you're watching on the news. Because as sin becomes more familiar to you, it becomes less serious. Has anyone experienced that in their own life where they've felt like they've become almost numb to sin, where it's not as much of a big deal because you've become familiar with it. I think everyone's experienced that. Um, and then there comes a time when you realize, whoa, this, this doesn't even bother me that much anymore, and this is, this is not good. So God wants us to guard what we spend our time doing. In David's case, uh, David... You know, he, he might have been on the roof and could have seen Bathsheba, but the point was he, he lingered and continued to watch. That's where he felt. What he should have done is when he saw, he should have said, nope, and then just walked away, okay? God wants us to be quick and decisive in moments of temptation and not linger and listen to the serpent like Eve, Eve did. She continued the conversation with him. She continued to look at the serpent and say, wow, he's beautiful. He's saying all these wonderful things. He's offering me great things for disobeying God. What she should have done is said, no, God told me stay away from the tree. Don't go near it. Don't eat of it. And walked away. Same with David. He saw but he should have turned immediately. And in that, in that moment, everybody, when that temptation comes, you've got to make a snap decision because it's, a, it's actually a life, it could be a life or death decision that you're making in the moment when you're being tempted, whether you choose to sin or not. Because sometimes it could be the sin that um, breaks the camel's back. Okay. that could set you over the edge and put you, um, put you on a road that you can't turn back from anymore. It's just at that point. But good news is, David didn't reach that point. The Lord sent a prophet to rebuke David, and David reformed, he was redeemed, and, and uh, I'm hoping on meeting him in the kingdom of God one day. So that's the good news. Even when you sin, God still wants to help you. He doesn't cast you away. Because remember, God wants to help us on the avenue to glory. He's not, he's not trying to leave us off on the side of the road and leave us there. God is going to send help, be awake and ready for when he sends it. Uh, 
God wants to help you. And so, um, the good news is, is by God's grace, we'll see David in the kingdom one day. Um, let's go over to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verses 5 and 6. It's written here, For those who live according to the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, um, sorry, for those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, what do they do? They set their mind on the things of the Spirit. God helps us, he makes us spiritually minded. For to be carnally minded is death, it's slavery. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Who here wants life and peace? Amen. It, it's worth it. It's worth your greatest investment, your time, your efforts. It's good to exercise yourself in spiritual things because those are the most profitable things that you can do on this earth. Prayer, Bible study, praising God, thanking God, worshiping together on Sabbath, um, attending gatherings where there's brothers and sisters who love the Lord. So spiritual things so that you can reap spiritual things. Who here feels like they need to be more spiritual? Yeah? Okay, it, it's actually logical and simple on how to become more spiritual. God does it, but it's, it's very simple. The Bible says you reap what you sow. So if we want to reap spiritual benefits, we need to sow in spiritual things. So what could David have been doing when he was um, not out at war? Now, it wasn't a sin for David to not be at war. He was the king. He could decide if he wanted to go or not. But it might not have been the best situation to put himself in because it was a possibility of temptation. He didn't sin by not going out to war, from what I can see. So what he could have done is spent time in prayer, he could have spent time in some other work of service for people rather than being at war. Um, I really believe that we're, we're most happy and joyful and connected to God when we're somehow sowing in spiritual things or investing in helping other people somehow. It doesn't mean you even have to be with people, but let's say um, you, know, you don't feel like you can go out and give a Bible to study with someone. You can't be out at war. It's just too much right now. It's, I just, you know, I can't study with someone. Well, take some time and relax. Ponder the things of nature. Ask God what he can teach you from nature. So there's, there's always a way that you can be sowing spiritually and um, try to make use of your time um, to sow to spiritual things. Because remember, on the avenue to glory, this is a spiritual battle. We want to be spiritual people, not fleshly people. Um, there has to be a balance, and the spirit should be in control of the flesh. Um, and David could have uh, done that if maybe he was praying like Daniel was. Remember Daniel, when he was in the kingdom of Babylon? He would take time every day and pray to God. He, he, his faith and his dependence upon God was so noteworthy that his counselors or the people that were advisors with him actually took note of it, and they uh, it even made them mad. But Daniel was a, a very spiritual man, and he did great things uh, for the king of Babylon and for us by writing down those prophecies that God gave him. So on the avenue to glory, it pays high dividends to sow in spiritual things. Pays high dividends. And it's good to remember that we're not doing it alone. We have a helper, the Holy Spirit. You remember, Jesus says, I won't leave you helpless. I will send you a helper, the Holy Spirit. Let's go to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. Mm -hmm. 
Colossians chapter 3, verse 2. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. Verse 3, for you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. The avenue to glory with God comes when we set our mind on things above, not on things of the earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. And we receive our glorious body and then we go on that glorious road literally to heaven when Jesus returns. When in this life we've set our mind on things that are above. Um, does anyone here like to look up at the sky sometimes? I got a question for you. Let's take a, a little poll here. Who likes to look, all right, two choices, the sky in the daytime or the sky at night? Um, who likes to look at the sky in the day more than the night? Okay, I'm just curious. There's no right or wrong answer. I'm just curious. All right, who likes to look at the night sky more? Yeah, yeah I, I actually like to look at the night sky more too. I like both, but it's nice. But either way, you get to look at something above, and it's actually, it's a good feeling when you look up. When people say to get motivated or to um, have a good feeling, to just feel good, they say, what do they tell people? Hey, look up. Things will be okay. Actually, when you literally look up, it actually does make you feel better. Um, when someone's looking down and they're walking around, you kind of assume that something might be wrong. Okay? Sometimes people are looking down because they're in deep thought and it's distracting to look somewhere else. Uh, they're more in their own head when they're when they're um, looking down. But looking up, it kind of gives you a feeling of, of almost freedom. You know? Like, try it right now. Just look up. Does it, does it feel kind of good to look up? I, I think it does. Um, and there's actually f physiological things to that where if you look up, it'll change even the way you think. Um, I'm pretty interested in some of those things. Um, so... God says to set your mind on things are above. Some of those things are, especially in this present day, it's to set our mind on Christ's work for us in the heavenly temple right now. Um, I think many of us know that Christ is in the temple in heaven right now, and he's performing the final work for um, his people in this day of judgment. Set your mind on things above, and that will keep you moving forward on the avenue of glory. Keep your mind on things above. Remember that you have a high priest who's ready to forgive you of your sins. He's going over the records of people right now. He's um, preparing people to stand in the great day of God. And one day he will finish uh, in that work, but um, at this point, it, it's very helpful to set our mind on what's going on in heaven because because when we're going about our daily life on earth, it's easy to lose track of heaven. And sometimes we get caught up in this life, um, get distracted. Like, like when my car overheated, it could get easy to get focused on that and think, what am I going to do? But uh, God helps us to keep our mind on things above and have that peace that the world doesn't have. Um, he'll help us keep our mind on things above rather than looking at Bathsheba on the roof, God will help us look up rather than down on that roof over there. Okay? So, it's valuable to set your mind on things above. 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1. 
verse 13. This is an encouragement from our brother Peter, who is resting in the grave. 1 Peter 1, verse 13. Here's an encouragement from Peter. He says, Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the re revelation of Jesus Christ. There's a common thing, theme you'll see among the apostles, disciples, and these solid um, people of faith. You'll see that their hope was established on the revelation of Christ at his second coming. They had hope of going up with him in glory when he returned. And this is the hope that we have to offer to the world. The avenue to glory includes Christ coming to pick us up and give us a ride home. And in the meantime, here's Peter's encouragement. He says, gird up the loins of your mind. You know, pick yourself up. Be sober. Have a clear mind. Keep your wits about you. Stay rational. And rest your hope. He says, rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And that grace is that he's giving us eternal life despite us being sinners. Okay? We've sinned, we've broken the law of God, but he's given us forgiveness when we come to him in repentance. That's the hope we have. And lastly here, last Bible verse I'm going to share. Psalm 119, verse 31. Psalm 119, verse 31. Psalm 119, verse 31. It looks like, oh, that's a, it's not a 31, that's a 7. Psalm 119, 37. Turn away my eyes from looking at worthless things and revive me in your way. We could even say revive me in your avenue. This is a, a beautiful prayer and a, and a simple one. It's just a prayer to the Lord. Turn my eyes away from looking at worthless things. Let's Look at valuable things, brothers and sisters. Let's spend our time, give our attention, our sight, our ears, our taste, our touch, our nose. Let's give, let's give our senses things that are valuable because there's transformative power in that. And what better could we spend time looking at than Jesus' work for us? Throughout throughout everything we've seen, not only in heaven by faith today, but let's spend time looking at something valuable, someone valuable. That's Jesus. We have a picture of his love and mercy and his dealings with people throughout Scripture. In the Old Testament, the New Testament, we get to see him in action, healing, teaching, preaching, praying in the Gospels, in person on the earth. Let's spend our time contemplating our Lord our Savior, our King, and our best friend. Let's spend time with Jesus because on the avenue to glory, he's the one that's going to give us the ride home. Um, remember, in the, in, back in the wilderness, people got bit by snakes. They were supposed to look at the serpent on the pole, which was representing Christ on the cross. That great life of love and sacrifice that saves us from the paralysis the numbness and the deadness and the death of sin. Let's behold Jesus on the road to glory. And you have a picture of him in the scriptures. You have a picture of him in parts of nature. You have a picture of him in the good qualities in other people. Behold, enjoy, and experience all of these things and feel yourself being transformed on the avenue to glory. 
It's a good road. The Lord said that there's life and peace when you set your mind on things above. So I want to encourage you all today. Set your mind on things above, on the avenue to glory. If your um, car overheats, don't get discouraged. The Lord's going to send help. Just pay attention for it. Uh, don't get distracted with Bathsheba on the roof, but set your mind on things above on the road to glory. Remember, we have a helper, the Holy Spirit. And so I hope you're all getting a picture of, of how much God loves us. He's not leaving us helpless, brothers and sisters. So my question for you today is, do you want to behold Jesus on the avenue to glory? Is that something you want today? Amen. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, I want to thank you for um, giving us your son, sending him, that we may behold him and become changed. We ask your blessing and your continual support and help on this avenue. In Jesus' name, amen.